that these days it's dangerous not to be in church. By our tradition, you know that naturally I should not come tonight because of the program we have on Sunday. But because of the respect I have for this Wednesday program, that's why I've decided to come. And I'm going to preach as if the whole church is here. If you were here last Wednesday when we were talking about um, fighting spiritual battle or spiritual warfare I'm not with my note for tonight. I use another note. Huh? Faith to win life battle. Thank you. And if you were in the church on Sunday, you see that we did something also along that line. All that the wonders of salvation. I'm continuing from where we stopped last Wednesday. I'm talking about the instrument of winning a spiritual battle. I told you that Battles are real. Not only in Nigeria, battles are real. Anywhere you find human beings, there will be battle. Battles are not limited to Africa. Only the natures of the battle can be different from each other. There are spiritual battles. It's going on everywhere. So there are spiritual battles. And I told you last Wednesday about the reality of warfare of this battle. I showed you some relevant scriptures about this battle. I remember I read with you Ephesians chapter 6 From verse 10, the apostle said to the efficient Christian, he was writing the epistle letter to a church. The church at Ephesus. And he told them, finally, my brethren, be strong. In the Lord. If there is no battle to fight, God will not say you should be strong in the Lord. The reason why Paul, by the Spirit of God, said that is so that you'll be able to fight. He said, Be strong in the Lord 
and in what? In the power of his might. Then I further told you about how can we be strong in the Lord? From the next verse, he said, put on the whole armor. Oh, wow. Technician, it's only mono and the echo is too much. The next verse, that should be verse 11. He said, put on the whole armor of God. So that you'll be able to withstand in the evil day. Look at it, Ephesians chapter 6. Are you there now? Look at the verse uh, 10. Finally, what? He didn't say finally the sinners. My brethren. The word brethren means brothers and sisters. Be strong. It's an instruction of the spirit. Mommy, are you hearing? Be strong. I believe that is hearing. Be strong in the Lord. And that has been my point of emphasis. These days, that Satan has no regard for anybody. For you to win a spiritual battle, you must be personally strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. But the problem we have in the world today is that people are looking for whom to fight the battle for them. Who wants to pray for me? And the first prophet, they are feeding fat. Why? Because they are always looking for somebody to fight. But Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to, look at it, verse 11. Put on what? The whole armor of God that ye may be able to. To stand against the wise of the devil. So in this spiritual warfare, the exhortation to you as a believer is to be strong in the Lord. If there's any lesson you can learn from here, if there's anything you should take as a strict instruction, is to develop yourself so that you'll be able to stand to, def to defend yourself. If there's anything I want to be remembered for in this church is the fact that we are be able to pass instruction to you to learn how to develop yourself and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that you can fight to defend yourself in the days of battle. Please, you are causing distraction, please. Leave that. You better pay attention here. It's the greatest lesson you can learn from here. And that's why people, you, you wonder, you were here last Wednesday, you wonder why the eagerness, people are not ready for that. If I say when you are coming, I bring anointing oil. So you don't need to do anything. Just pray for anointing oil. Go and anoint yourself. You will see. You will see what will happen. There will be no seat here for seat to sit down. But for you to be trained. And you know how to handle the enemy for your, I mean by yourself. 
you know how you can defend yourself in the days of battle. People don't want a typical Africa doesn't want that. So that's why you go to the mountain. You see different kinds of people. Even those who have been Christian for 30 years, you see them go and look for the prophet. What are they? Eh, I want you to see something for me. People are, you don't need it. It's okay if there is somebody who is gifted. That's okay. But the point is that Paul said, be strong, what? In the Lord and in the power of his might. Because the day the enemy of your soul will strike, he will not tell you. That's why the Bible says, he's a thief. It's like a thief in the night. A thief will never tell you when he's coming. In fact, he will have studied you and know that it's the day you are not watching. Most of the estate, the thieves will come there on Sunday morning around 10 a.m. when they know that a typical, an African person will have gone to church. They'll go and break their houses. That's a thief. So we have told you that last uh, Wednesday that about the reality of spiritual warfare is part of the calling is part of it. The moment you are born again, you are born into the life of battle. They now mention how you can be strong in the Lord. Mention so many armor you are to put on. They say put on the whole armor of God. Put it on. That he may be able to withstand To stand against the wise of the devil. Verse 12, he said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. That is wicked spirit. He said, But wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And even after having done all to stand. He now mentioned all those armor, armor, armor that we are to put on. He now mentioned those armor we are to put on. And Then I told you last Wednesday also that which is very bitter for anybody to swallow that spiritual warfare is a fight of faith. If you are not ready to engage that battle on the platform of faith there is no way you can win it. Spiritual battle. If you are not ready to fight it on the platform of faith, there is no way you can win it. It must be on the platform of faith. I remember we read Romans, sorry, um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. That says, fight the good fight of what? Of faith. He even said, We are there unto are ye called. We are called to fight the good fight of faith. So there is no day we'll be talking about spiritual warfare without talking about faith. It takes faith to win it. He has no respect for anything you are doing if there is no faith in it. When the Bible says, resist the devil and it shall flee away from you, he is talking about resisting the devil in faith. With the weapons of faith.
Peter said that your enemy, your adversary, the devil, roaring all about, looking for whom to devour. That's verse 8. Verse 9. Whom ye resist steadfastly in the faith. That's verse 9. That's First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He said, your adversary, the devil, is running all about, looking for him to devour. Verse 9 says, whom ye resist steadfastly in what? In the faith. So you can only resist him by faith. And I remember I read to you last Monday also about Hebrew chapter 11 where the writer said what shall I say more about Gideon, about Jephthah who through faith subdue kingdoms. Kingdoms of darkness can only be subdued by faith and through faith. And our popular scriptures in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Simon, Simon, Satan desire to have you that he may switch you as wheat, that he may disgrace you. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. It's one thing in your life that must not fail. There are times you can be very weak to pray. Maybe you are down. Something happened. There are times that you can be very, you can be tired, exhausted to pray. There are times you may not be able to fast. But one thing that must always be on the ground in your life is faith. Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith, what? Fail not. May your faith never fail. When, whenever Satan gained an upper hand, many at times say, ah, we have not prayed more. We have not fasted more. We have, nobody will ever talk about believing or faith. I told you also last Wednesday, Paul, where we have read in Ephesians chapter 6, he said, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. We are with ye shall be able to do what? Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, arrows of the wicked. Above all, taking the shield of faith, we are with ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So it's faith. If Jesus could tell Peter that I pray for you that your faith fail not in the day of adversity. That's the prayer. If somebody knows that you are passing through any adversity, that's the prayer. should be praying for you that your faith fail not. Jesus said, be unto you according to what? Are you hearing me? Look at the way they do, eh? Be it unto you. According to what? According to your faith. Not even according to God. No. It's according to your faith. What you are passing through, God is not responsible. It's your faith that is responsible. Not even according to the devil. Are you hearing me? They, they attack me. No, it's not about attacking you. When faith is on ground, according to what Jesus told Peter, 
and your faith has not failed. The attack will not, will not, will not take place. It is unto every man, every woman, according to his or her faith. It is unto me according to my faith. And so people don't deserve, develop their faith and think that they can just have anything. God is not partial. Why should God do for one and will not do for the other? Something must be wrong. And the only thing that is wrong is that one has faith to claim what belongs to him. The other one does not have. It is unto every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, according to his faith. But what is the reason why the faith is failing? The faith is failing because people are not ready to develop it. How do you acquire faith? Faith cometh by hearing. Simple. As we, then we make the noise. Now, do you hear? Are you a hearer? Do you go for tape? It's part of it. Something restrain you. Who is that something? Satan. If the scripture is correct, that faith cometh by hearing, hearing, hearing. I told you when we were born again in those days, every morning we have, we have to go and buy tapes. I don't even know whether those, those uh, cassette players is existing again. Uh, that small one that has auto reverse. If we are traveling from here to Lagos, we'll preach. Maybe 30 minutes. The rest of the journey, our earpiece is on our head. From here to Lagos. Hearing messages and messages, we were loaded. There could never be any battle. Where does battle come? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Is what you digest, what you feed on, that feed your heart. We we'll hear message from there until we come down. But today is Adaba. That all those funny, funny girls, guys, they are in Adaba. They are the ones you know them. Omoru <laughs> They are the ones that feed your life. I said, you want to have faith? Where will you get it? Faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So, we don't develop the faith. So, that is why that the enemy is getting an upper hand. So, every battle of life will be won by faith. Any kind, any type, by faith. I appreciate many of our brethren, especially the youth that God that prayed, go all about. I appreciate you. Meet before program, pray. But the, my exhortation is that be a hearer. James chapter 1 verse 22. You are a doer of the word. By hearing the word. Now, all that I've been telling you are the revision of last Wednesday. So, building on that tonight, I say. The instrument. Of faith to win life battle. What I'm simply saying is that if faith is the weapon, you need to win the battle. There is an an, an instrument of faith that you want to. Study tonight. Let's read from Romans chapter 6, 
there are passage we have known in this uh, when is the fellowship what is message Romans chapter 10 verse 6 but the righteousness which is of faith speak it on this wise the righteousness which is of faith there is a righteousness that is of law but when the law was done away with faith came and it's on this wise say not in thy heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead now when you look at verse 6 he said say not where say not please can verse 6 he said say not in thy heart follow me say not where in thy heart saying it in your heart will not produce any result say not in thy heart that is to say who will go and bring Jesus from heaven to come and intervene say not in thy heart that is who will bring Jesus to intervene in my matter so it means that saying it in the heart is not faith. Look at verse 8 now. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even where? Uh. <laughs> so the word of faith in your mouth. Is an instrument of victory in every life battle. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. It see, continue, look at verse 9. That if thou shalt confess, now she's talking about saying it. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto what and this salvation is compound it includes deliverance from from danger it means deliverance from sickness and disease they are all salvation so it means that your mouth is an instrument of winning a war don't only say it in thy heart that is not enough for victory God does not recognize the one you say in your heart until your mouth pronounces it. It doesn't become a miracle. It must be said in your mouth. It must be what? Said. Where? In your mouth. The moment you are born again, your mouth becomes anointed. It becomes an instrument of deliverance. And it can become the instrument of bondage. If you are too cultural to say it, God will be too holy to perform the miracle for you. If you are too refined, 
to say it. Anything you don't say, you cannot possess. He said, what said it? The world is ninety. Your miracle is ninety. Jesus is very close to you with the power of his omnipotency to change your story. The world is ninety. Even the word of faith that we preach. This is a weapon to win every spiritual battles of life. And that is why any child that is given to unbridled tongue is in trouble. That negative, negative, they can back by, talk a lot. The church will be a sick church. The church will be a church that demons will be operating freely. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I think chapter 8, verse 4, he said, where the word of a king is, there is power. And if you are born again, Jesus said, and the Bible says, he has made them kings and priests. That's revelation. Chapter 1, I think verse 5. He has made us kings and priests unto himself. And Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And the Bible says, life and death, they are in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of what? Of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Poverty and riches is in the power of the tongue. Health and sickness is in the power of the tongue. Let your confessions change tonight because it is prevalent here. I don't have any money. Then you don't have. No fasting and prayer will put money into your pocket. You say you don't have. In fact, I'm sick now. You remain sick. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, he said, with thy mouth thou art taken. You are bound by the words of your mouth. That's what Jesus said. With thy mouth. Once he heard it, the words of victory is ninety. The power of his omnipotency is ninety. Very close to thee. The word of faith that we preach. The woman with an issue of blood. He told everybody in the house, I know. He said it. He didn't think it. Because there is no thinking without speaking that can do anything. He said, I know if I touch but the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made of. He pronounced, he said it. Everybody heard. He said it. So you must say it before it becomes a miracle. You must say it before it becomes a miracle. You must say it before it becomes what? A miracle. You must say it before it becomes what? And unfortunately, what we say is they are the negative type. That's why people that magnify the devil, he said, in fact, they come here, they fly. The devil is happy to be hearing that. You exalt the devil. You, 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 <laughs> like the English of uh, our Lake Abishon. He said, over oh, important thing, the devil. You are over important thing. Of course, love, loss of boldness and courage come out of ignorance of whom you are. You know, you don't know that you are more, you don't know. Even when they tell you your traditional belief in the church where you come to this place cannot make you to assume it. Many of you don't know that you are above Satan. You don't know. The moment you are born again, you become a son of God. Am I right? Where do you find it? John chapter 1, verse what? 12. As many that receive him, 
He gave them power to become what? He didn't say daughters of God. Now, a son of God, are you a son of God? Are you sure? Are you sure? Goat we give back to goat. Am I right? Swine we give back to swine. So, as a son of God, by virtue of the new birth in Christ, you come to God class. To what? There are different kingdoms. We have animal kingdom. We have plant kingdom. Many of you are not students of science, have you? We have different kind of kingdom. So we have God kingdom. So by heaven arrangement, the new birth brings you to that level. You become a son of God. A product of God. And Satan belonged to the angelic class. He was an angel. Thou art anointed cherubs that cover it. Cherubims are angels. So, God class, angelic class, animal class, gothic class, every other class. So, you are above the devil. That's why the Bible says, even the angels themselves, God said, they are ministry spirit that minister to those who are here for salvation. Those who have inherited salvation, the angels, they are created to take care of us. So they are our servants, the angels. To take care of all of us that are here for salvation. They are the ones that bring the healing, bring everything. They, they, they minister to us. So we, we belong to God's class. In um, Psalm 82, is there? He said, Is it not? He said, Has he not said that? And ye are gods. And in the same word that is used for God, Elohim, that is used, that is used there. And Jesus repeated it in John chapter 10. When they were challenging his authority. He said, is he not written in your law? And he said that ye are gods. So I want you to understand that. God told Moses. He said, behold, I have made you a god over Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. So when you don't have this knowledge of this, you are bound to fight it. You are, you are bound to fear the devil. When you see cockroach and uh, lizard fighting, you will be afraid. When you see some black charcoal and uh, something, they throw it and they drop it on your table in the office and you lock the door, you put the key into your pocket when you are going home yes, yesterday night. You just open it by yourself again this morning only to find some black thing they put on the table. You'll be afraid. And then you'll be calling pastor. Pastor, pray now. <laughs> Shout out. So if you know where you are, you know whom you are, that you belong to God class. You are a child of, you carry God's DNA. If it were possible to carry a test, you would just have the same DNA of God the Father through Jesus Christ. There, there are scriptures that confirm me. Look, they are looking at me. He said, Jesus, I am divine. Eh? Is it in your Bible? John 15. I am divine. Ye are what? Is there any difference between the branch and the vine? I am the cocoa tree. And you are the branch of the cocoa tree. And every branch in me. So, we carry the same genes. The same genotype. The same genes. We carry it by faith. By what? So, you now see where faith comes in. Faith makes all this arrangement to work. How can ordinary woman being of dust and clay say, I am God? By faith, there is a transplantation that was done. So, what I'm saying is that we are not having the conquering faith. We don't have the audacity to declare by our mouth because of the ignorance of whom we are. We don't really believe. So we are still afraid. There is still fear somewhere else. There. You still believe that way. If you don't pray very well, Lord, they will kill you. You still believe it. And it's not prayer that saves you. It's because there is something that happened to you when you were born again. There was an exchange. Shout hallelujah. So the weapon. So can you 
you see, wave your hand to Jesus. How can I carry atomic bomb in my hand and I will be afraid? <laughs> your mouth. And of, unfortunately, you can't travel and leave your mouth behind. Can you leave it behind? Talk to me now. And it's the instrument of deliverance. What said it? The world is mighty. I cannot be sick. <laughs> the world is mighty. I cannot be oppressed. That one will liberate you more than 30 days in IVG. I cannot. Always looking for an opportunity to talk. To talk faith. Always looking for an opportunity to, to shout it. What said it? Is what we bring Jesus down? He said, "Don't think it. Say it. Don't what? Don't think it. Do what? Say it. Think not in your heart. That is to say, who will go up there to go and bring Jesus? He said, "He's very close to you. Jesus is mighty to rescue you, but he will not do anything until you say it." Say, I will say it. Are you wiser than God in Genesis chapter 1? And the Lord said, Let there be light. And there was light. And the Lord said, Let there be firmament. And the Lord said, Let there be this. And the Lord said, Why did God not just think it and think it in his heart? Why must God have to say it? And the Lord said, and what you don't understand is that the spoken word is Jesus. He is the word of God. Am I right? So, you see the way the, the Trinity works. God the Father spoke the word. The word went forth. Holy Ghost took it over. You see the same process. You are not hearing me. So, we are not just making empty boast. If you read Mark 11, verse Mark 11, verse 23, Jesus said, If thou shalt say to this mountain, Amen? Look up here. If thou shalt say to what? Jesus didn't say, If thou shalt look unto this mountain. No, looking will not do anything to the mountain. He will be looking at you. Jesus didn't say, if thou shalt think in your heart about this mountain. Oh, a lot of people will think. And the mountain will just be looking at them. But Jesus, if thou shalt say to this mountain, this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. He said, he shall have whatsoever he said. He shall have what? Whatsoever he said. He shall have what? Whatsoever he said. Welcome. I said you are welcome. He shall have what? Whatsoever he said. He shall have what? Whatsoever he said. He shall have what? Whatsoever. So you can only have what you say. In this word of faith. Now, I will, it, there, there is a man of God. Oh, that I love so much. I know as I'm saying now, you must have, you must, I know you know the man I'm talking about. This man lived before his time. Because of the volumes of revelation. There are common passages I'm sharing with you. Look at Psalm 23. What's the name of this um, father in the Lord? What's his name? Talk to me. What is his name? David, some are not even opening Bible. Psalm 23. 
there's a revelation here that is turning me on. Turning me on. Revelation, sorry, Psalm 23. We only need verse 1 for tonight. Shall we read it together after the count of two? I have not counted two. Uh -uh. I wonder how you pass why I can say. After the count of two. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Now, one, two. I know any dick and Harry on the street. We say it offhand. Because it's a common. Even there are some, this old lorry, they will write Psalm 23 at the back. Am I right? It's a common Psalm. But that's what makes it work. It's the revelation inside. David said, The Lord is my shepherd. What he's simply saying is that I know whom I am. I know whom I have believed. The Lord is my shepherd. I trust him. The Lord is my shepherd. That's all that you need in life. To overcome every life problems, the consciousness of whom you believe, the Lord is my shepherd. And if you are not born again, you should not say it. If you are born again, then this is your winning ticket anywhere you go. Jesus said, I know my sheep. And my sheep is known of me. So David said, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And then what was the next thing? I shall not what? If you look at parallel or you have a Bible that have notes, it will tell you that the word want there is lack. I shall not lack. Now where am I going? I'm talking about instrument of winning every life battle. I know if there's any battle you want to win in your life, it's battle against poverty, financial hardship. I know that is what formed the basis of your prayer. I know that is why you go to the mountain to pray. But do you know this kind of audacity of faith that David had? And he said, I know I can never be poor. I used to hear it from some of our men of God, sometimes I feel somehow, you know, we belong to the holiness circle. How can somebody say I can never be poor? Maybe you want to extort people. I now begin to understand, when I begin to understand the principle of faith, that until you say it, you don't have it. And they are not saying it on the platform of spiritual emptiness, just merely confession. No. They know, they know whom, they, be, they know what he has done. So when you say, the Lord is my shepherd, it means that you know what he has done for you. There are a lot of people that have the picture of Jesus in their city room. They glaze it. Are we even sure that that's Jesus? Did any of them? All this painting, nobody saw Jesus. Whether he has beard or not, nobody knew. So, until we see him rapture, we know this is the original Jesus. So, but the one they put in glazing and put everywhere. Let us just assume. But you don't need any picture. Jesus is the word of God. Is somebody hearing me? The revelation of the scripture is enough for you. You don't need any picture. Whether he look like Jesus, he doesn't look like Jesus. He said, they that worship God, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. Those of us who are, who are from Roman Catholic, you, you know what we do. We, we put the image of Mary inside a shrine and go there and begin to pray. That's idolatry. If you go and put the picture of Jesus and you are, it's idolatry. You don't need, he said, thou shalt not make any gravy image unto yourself. You don't need it. He said, the time has come that they that worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm not saying it's idolatry if you put the picture of Jesus in your, that's okay. But you don't go and begin to worship. And 
what has he done for you? So where, before David can say, I cannot, I shall not lack. Meaning that I cannot be poor. He must have had an encounter with the, with the Lord in that realm. And do you know if you know what the Bible says? You can say it. And if you are confessing it, you get it. What does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for what? Look at it. For what? Are you sure? For what? For my sake. He became what? So that through his poverty, he might be what? He, do you believe it? I don't believe so that's why you cannot say, I cannot be poor. You can't say it. But David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I know what he did for me. Therefore, I shall not lack. It's not possible. I know a lot of people will condemn him. It doesn't matter. The man who have encountered revelation is different from the man who, who have not encountered anything. That's your, that's your problem. That's your headache. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It's not possible. I know what he had done for me. Because of me, he became poor. So that through his poverty, I might be rich. Because I believe what he has done, I can say it anywhere. Therefore, I cannot be poor. That's what David was saying. The world is mighty. Even in thy mouth. If he didn't say it, they would not have written it down. He said it. I cannot, I can, I, I, I cannot be poor. He said it. If that is true of poverty, then it must be true of sickness. That when you know the revelation of what Christ has done, and when I say revelation of what Christ has done, I'm talking about redemption. What he became for you to become is redemption. What he became, everybody, say it with me. What he became for me to become. That's redemption. The Bible says, he was made sick. Even though he knew no sickness. Because he said, the Bible says, that he took your infirmity. Oh, do you believe it? You don't. I'm quoting Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. He said that it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying that Jesus himself took our infirmity, including cancer, high blood prayer, all the sickness you may be, he took so that you can be free. So if you believe he actually took, then you can declare, I cannot be sick. What said it? The word is mighty. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith. That, But you find it difficult to say because you don't really believe how he said. No, you know it is in the Bible. You know if I ask now, you say, I believe. But what is the reason why you cannot, you, you are not bold to say it? Because you are not, you are, you are, you are not, you don't really believe how he said. The idea is, suppose I become sick tomorrow. That is not your headache. If I become sick tomorrow and they carry me to the hospital, does he cancel the Bible? You are not hearing me. Does he cancel the Bible? That is the limit of my faith. That doesn't mean that the Bible is not correct. Hey, pastor is sick. Hey, I've tried my best. But what the Bible says is that Jesus took every infirmity. He carried everything. And if he carried, then I don't have what he carried. How can you have what he carried? But the reason why we are not enjoying it and we are not winning those battles is because we can't say it. Say not in your heart. <laughs> because that will, not, that will not give you a winning, <laughs> a winning ticket. 
Say not in your heart. If it is to say in our heart, oh, we say a lot of things because you know Bible. And God said, I know. <laughs> but do you know what God said? Joel chapter 3. Don't go there. Y'all be looking at me. Verse 10. He said, let the weak say. He didn't say, let the weak think. You are not hearing me. He didn't say, let the weak imagine. Let the weak do what? He's weak, oh. And he's very weak. Because, uh, hey, but he's still paining me. But the, I mean, the Bible says, let the weak say. Let him talk it out. What do you talk? You talk Bible. God has said, by his strife, you are healed. Say it. That's all, you get it. Let the weak what? Say, I am strong. So, but in your own case, you want to be strong before you say it, and you will never be strong. That's the problem we have. He said, but I can still see the symptom. So, you want the symptom to disappear before you say what God said you are. That what God said he has done in your... Let the weak say, what? I am strong. Only a man and woman of faith can say that word. Only a man and a woman of faith can do what? Can say what? The symptoms are there. The pains are there. The weakness is there. And after you have been prayed for, it will tell somebody who have what I call the audacity of faith. Before he can say, I'm strong. I'm strong. Faith not said is not faith. It's fake. Any faith that is not expressing words is fake. We are told in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 He said for they overcame him <laughs> By the blood of the lamb <laughs> That's not all Being born again Because when you are born again you have, you, The blood covers your life <laughs> And the blood is there The blood of the lamb But there are two things They overcame him by the blood of the lamb And by the words of their testimony what are the what, what do we mean by words of testimony? They are the words of what God has said. That's what of your testimony. The book of God is called the book of testimony. Look at chapter 18. Of the psalm. Chapter 18. Are you following David? Chapter 18 of Psalm. Sorry, chapter um, Psalm 18. Verse. Um, let me start from verse 43. Thou hast delivered me. From the striving of the people. Thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. How? Verse 44. As soon as they hear of me. <laughs> hey, say hey. As soon as they hear of me. They shall obey me. The stranger shall submit themselves unto me. But they must hear. <laughs> if you have said nothing, they will hear nothing. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. You go to the village and all those uh, old women, uh, witchcraft, they are, they, are, they are boasting and they are ridiculing you. Uh, and you remain there. He said, uh, uh, we must do it with wisdom because they can come in the night. Ah, you have invited them already. Look, gentility is not a virtue in spiritual warfare. Gentility, everybody, it is not a virtue. 
in the spiritual warfare. In the ordinary, we are gentle. It's a virtue. But when it comes to spiritual warfare, fighting the devil, gentility is not a virtue. I've given you this testimony many times. There are two of them. Now, many years ago, I was, I was doing extra morals uh, to do GC many years ago. That is in the 70s. I would trek from stadium to Aquinas College. The Asramora was in Aquinas College. Every day. And I was already, I was already born again. In fact, I could go back to that kind of descent back to that kind of thing because I was born again. No, but I was a friend that was very close. He was an unbeliever. He, he refused to leave me alone. He just loved me. Because in those days, I used to have innovations. I've been doing this kind of innovative, creative things right from my after school. When I was looking for something. So he loved those things and he didn't want to leave me. And he didn't want my own Jesus. <laughs> so, we will trek, he lives at that time, he lived in Ayedo. So we join him in the stadium, we trek to the school, we trek back. So one of the days, and I had one principle. The church I was going that time, they have fellowship three times a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. As my mother start maybe around four. I may have lecture six, seven. That day of fellowship, I must leave. A young convert to come to church. And I was offering physics, chemistry, biology, all this kind of. I won't attend those extra morals. So one of the days, as we are, I was about leaving. Because there was a fellowship that day. So I have to leave on time. Maybe I left around five or six or thereabout. I see it's supposed to have some lectures, but because of church. So as we're about to leave. Everywhere was dark and wind was blowing, blowing pieces of paper, everything. You know, this cyclone kind of uh, something. And the rain had been dropping with thick. You know, this is the rain that will really fall. You know, we are too bold in those days. And already I've got move out of the classroom, moving away when it becomes so serious. He said, Let's run back. I said, Not me. He said, but rain. I said, rain cannot beat me. He said, ah. I said, I'm telling you, until I get to where I'm going, this rain will not touch the ground. I'm talking about saying it. Being a non-believer, he decided to keep quiet. I know why he kept quiet. He said, Shebe, Wari, Tabado, John. <laughs> so, you know, to trek from Aquinas, to trek back to stadium here, you know how long. So, everywhere the rain, but it, well, it couldn't fall. I knew there was an invisible hand that held it back. It was so serious. I just take. I have ordered it. I've said it. I don't need to bother myself. We trek. So the church I was attending at that time was in another room, but that was very close to stadium. So. I know that he might be thinking it's coincident. I say, I know you'll be saying, thinking that this thing is what? Coincidence. I say, as soon as I step my feet at the door of our fellowship, church, the rain, I, 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 I release the rain. As the Lord, God honors faith when it is spoken. If I have taught it, 
And I keep on thinking it. Oh Lord God, don't let it fall. And I'm saying it in, in a lie. As soon as I just put my phone that day. You know this thing I've been so angry before. With all anger, it just broke loose. I don't know. <laughs> Shame, I believe, did not allow him to run back to church. I'm t- as soon as I was stepping, you see it, you get it. When I was working in the business of agriculture, initially, I was uh, one of the officers in Egypt. So they closed down that place, they brought us to the headquarters. So I was working in the headquarters, that's Obaile Road, many years ago. Then, they now say all of us that were brought there, I still have senior who are level, level, who all of us, they said we should, they should post all of us out of the headquarters. Some to Riverine area, so it was part of Ondo State at that time. I didn't bother. Those things doesn't come into prayer. So, well, because I was in the headquarters among them, they have done this thing several times that it never worked. So now there was an order from above, maybe from the peers, and they have put action, and they have done the posting, and they posted me to Ikiti Southwest. And I was a pastor in Akure here. So, my immediate senior carried the file to reveal to me official secret. There is official secret. He said, Mr. So-and-so, I just want to show you this official secret. He showed me the action the PS have put on it and that, uh, that you have been posted to... <laughs> so, I've been looking for an opportunity to talk. I said, it is not possible. If, the way he got angry, he just went away. That's what I say. Oh, this is you. He doesn't concern me. I have said it. It must come to. Your own will come to pass. That is the instrument of winning battle. I say it cannot happen. He said, but this, I am telling you. Hey. It's Tom and he went away. And I went away. I didn't even say, when I go home, I said, Father. I bind, I don't need to bind anything. I've said it. Where the words of a king is, there is. I didn't hear anything. Something they say, quick, quick, quick. So later, the old guy now invited me. He said, Where do you want to go? <laughs> so I now told him, Amen. Inside me, I should have said that. That's what you support. Who am I? I was a junior officer, level six officer. At that time, you know, I said, it's a cure. I'm a pastor. I can't go anywhere. So, <laughs> shout hallelujah. You say it, you get it. On the platform of the finished work of Christ. How can somebody pay a price for your sickness? And sickness can still come. He was bruised. He was wounded. He was chastised. And the Bible said the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And then you are still afraid to declare to every devil, I cannot have high blood prayer. You will be saying it. Telling it. Even though you see all the symptoms, it doesn't matter. Let the weak say, I am. Are you strong? Rise upon your feet now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I can never be poor. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be poor. 
I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to be overcome. I don't know about you. Confess it for yourself. I refuse it. I cannot. It cannot happen. Say it with your mouth. I refuse. I refuse to be barren. I cannot be barren. I refuse. I refuse. In Jesus name we pray. So shall it be in Jesus name. So shall it be in Jesus name. So shall it be in Jesus name. Anything you reject by your mouth, they are rejected. Anything you ban by your mouth, they are banned. Anything you remove by your mouth, they are removed. Any giant you silence by your mouth, they are silenced. In the name of Jesus. By your word, receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle, baby. Receive your miracle job. Receive your miracle healing. 
receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.